for who he is and what he can do. Lord, we thank you for who you are, the everlasting Savior. We receive all the praise for the adoration you have been so good to us. Lord, we thank you, my God and my King. You are faithful to each one of us. Lord, you have been faithful throughout the week. We thank you, Lord. You have seen us through, given us new strength every day because your masses are new every day. You are going to have to a Sunday. I'm at Wombezea. Ah, hey, there, Makatika Mashako. Katika Akia Yaka, I'm at Wombezea. I'm at Wombezea. Katika Vile Bora, I'm at the Siku. Now, if you hear, where is Siku Aramisi? Tuna Semani Asante. Lord, we receive all the praise because of your faithfulness. Your goodness is from everlasting to everlasting. Jehovah, my day. We bless you. Hallelujah. Ni asante. Ni asante buwana wa majeshi. Uki imuliwa, uki tukuswa, unastahili buwana kwa buduwa kwa sababu ya imuema. Tunasema ni asante. O buwana, ukimile kuongezea ringi hii. Tunasema ni asante. Buwana siku ya leo, unatushukulikia na kudosha na tunatua shukurani zetu. Tua kutoka kwa mio yetu na midomo yetu na kili kwa sababu ya ni muema. We thank you, Balasu King. Receive all the praise. Oh, Rika Zanda Boteka. Oh, Shalamabu. Oh, Unasayu. As you continue giving us a progressive revelation, we thank you this lunch hour in the name of the Lord. Receive all the praise, receive all the adoration in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We can have our seats in the name of the Lord. Our God is so faithful and our God is good in everything he does. And this is the most precious name I can talk about all the days of my life because it's a sweet, sweet name of Jesus. Uh, today, or uh, throughout this week, we have been sharing on the six things that God hates most. And in almost every instant in the Bible, as well as in life, as well as in life, uh, the Bible 
is a good book to rely upon and when God speaks he speaks the truth and reality of life so in every in almost every instance in the Bible as well in life sin is associated with failure and not success and it is the desire of God that his children will succeed and because of that the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter number 6 and that is from verse number 16 to number 19 that there are those things which God hates most and this sins summarizes every other sin of life Proverbs 6, 6 verse 16 to 19 says these things these six things the Lord hate yes seven are an abomination to him a proud look a lying tongue the hands that shed innocent blood a heart that devises wicked plans feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speak lies, and one who sows seeds of discord among brethren. God hates these sins. And because of that reason, we have talked throughout the week on the sin of pride, and we spoke on the sin of lying tongue, and yesterday we spoke about the hands which shed innocent blood and today I want us to talk on the fourth thing that God hates most and in the book of Proverbs 6 and verse number 18 the Bible says a heart that devises wicked plans and feet that are swift in learning to evil God hates and unless the Lord rules a person's heart, sin looms over it. And the outcome is evil conduct. God hates not only uh, that heart which makes wicked plans, but also the feet that carry out those plans. God hates. For everything you, you do falls from the heart. Meaning, if your heart is impure, you will do things with the wrong motives. And when you guide your heart, you guard your heart, it is possible to keep away from perverse talk and you focus on walking the right path. It is the desire of God that his children will walk in the right path. And may God help us, and especially in the days we are living, because there are so many paths you can engage with which do, does not concern the will of God. And that allows God to direct your steps and keep your feet from evil. So if you effect from the wrong steps, God is faithful to always guide you in the, and guard your heart in the right footsteps. God hates not only a heart that makes wicked plans, but also the feet that carries out those plans. So in the scripture, feet are often used as reference to completing or enacting a plan. So whatever we devise in our hearts, then our feet engages to enact whatever plan, either positive or negative. So, in the case of an evil person, he is not just content to make wicked plans, but also he is engaged and hasty about carrying it out. When you came to this lunch hour fellowship, Definitely you brought it with your mind and then you engaged 
some influence in your heart until your feet brought up to this church home. The Bible says in the book of John 13 and verse number 27 to 30 that when Judas was fully possessed by Satan, he immediately left the upper room where they were sharing the Holy Communion. He hurried with his feet and sense and senses to Jesus' enemy so he could complete their murder. Here, sense involves the motives of our hearts. So, Jesus has organized and called his disciple for the last meal. But immediately when Jesus, Judas took that bread, Satan overflowed his heart. And then he started organizing evil plans. In verse number 26, the Bible says, Jesus they have answered, It is he to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. And after the piece of bread, then Satan entered into him. Then Jesus said to him, What do you do? Do it quickly. Verse number 28. Now, nobody at that table knew why he said this to him. Verse number 26. For some thought, because Judas had the money box, that Jesus was saying to him, Buy what things we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor people. And verse number that says, Therefore, having received that bread, he went out immediately. It was during the night. So, when Judas took the bread and he took the cup, Satan entered him. And then, he became hasty to do the intentions of his heart. Scientifically, when we think about something and you want to walk on it, the heart pumps more blood on your feet to hasten the motion to the required activity. So, all the organs in our body correlate scientifically. And that's why God has said that he hates a heart which devises wickedness and the feet which hasten to go and accomplish those evil plans. Therefore, and that's how the heart and feet are often used as a reference to the completing or enacting a plan. Scheming and plotting evil is one of the things God hates, according to Proverbs 6 and verse number 18. A heart that devises wicked plans, the feet that are swift in running to evil, that God hates. Hearts are the imagining way to bring evil to fruition as we complete what God opposes. So this man Judas had opposed Jesus and therefore he used his feet to go and sell Jesus to his enemies because the intentions of the heart were not right. I don't know what are the intentions of your heart. And may God help us to understand the days we are living because evil is sown in the mind before it is ever reaped in the field of the action. So before you see the reality of evil, it was in the mind of someone who thought about it. But the law of our land says, you are not guilty until proven guilty. And that is wrong judgment because the reality of evil is always in the mind of a person before it leaps in the field of his action. 
So the law does not complement the Bible. The law opposes the Bible. Because God judges us according to the evil in our hearts. And therefore, the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter number 5 and verse number 28, Jesus said, whoever looks at a woman to rust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So, adultery and fornication starts from our hearts because it is scientific and emotional. He also teaches in the sermon on the mountain we should not even let anger get the best of us and cause us to do something we might regret. So, don't make hasty decisions when you are in anger. And don't also make hasty decisions when you are full of joy because you might regret later on. And may God help you. So, when he was speaking on the mountain, that is Matthew 5, and verse number 22, he said, But I tell you that everyone who is angry with his brother without a cause will be in danger of judgment. Whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be in danger of the council. Whoever says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of Jehenna. So, when you start imagining, it starts from your mind, and then it is sold in your heart. And then, you start taking action. But if we prevent, because, at least it can be some kufungia ata macho yetu kuona lakini mtu anaitwa ayibu akasema i shall make a covenant with my eyes that i shall not look last for to a woman kwa hivyo unaweka curtain za macho yako unaona kweli lakini usipande hiyo kitu kwa moyo wako kwa sababu ukipanda and especially now when we are having a lot of uh, uh, things going on in the phone. Each one of us has got his own phone. Phonography and all those kind of things are in phone. So it is you to make decisions that you shall not engage your mind in those kind of things. Because these things are hurting. When you see them, they emotionally affect you. And may God help us. We are living in a time when the imagination of men and women are evil in God's sight. When evil hearts think up evil plots and schemes which leads to evil actions and sinful habits, therefore, by becoming a habitual sinner. You know, before a habit is formed, it is always thought, up, thought about. Kwa hivyo ni kitu utafikiria, na nipuasa uendele kuitekeleza. Na kuna vitu zingine utajiingiza, utaweza kujitoa. Hizi tabia za kunyu wapombe kidogo, atiwezi mwangu wa nikiwa karibu. Utakuja kujikuta, kwa sababu imekua tabia yako. It becomes a habitual sin. And you enter in bondage that hawezi yacha ukijiingiza katika ukahaba wa aina fulani utakuta mwili wako kwa sababu umezoea you become a habitual sinner na utaweza kuacha when david lied with bathsheba that was an entrance to his evil behavior aliweza kupata wanawake wengi sana the same case happened to his son solomon who had 1,000 wives. Kwa sababu wako wanatoshereka. Kwa sababu mwili kila sayi naitisha. So, so may God help you that your heart 
will not plot evil. Schemes which lead to actions. And by that, you become a habitual sinner. This habit leads us to bondage, and bondage leads us to death. Wakati na jizosha ya mambo, basi hapo ndi shetani anachukua mwanya. You know his work is to steal, destroy, and kill. Most of us, even though we are Christians, our conscience is dead. Na wakati na ono na rudia kitu, na iyo kitu kirudia, you are not judging yourself. It is to say, your conscience died long time back. And you, read, you need redemption and deliverance. The book of Romans, chapter number 6 and verse number 23 says, The wages of sin is death. And the devil want each one of us dead. If we are not dead physically, that our conscience shall die and be a forgotten issue in our life, or a forgotten chapter. And the outcome of such a thing that God hates leads to destruction. The two ways of a righteous and the wicked you can choose to walk on. So, you know, every day is made up of many choices. I have to make choices about my life. And that power is bestowed on you. So which way do you want to take? And that's why I'm talking about the two ways of the righteous and the wicked and which you can choose to walk on. And me, I've made a decision and I've chosen the way of Joshua. And I've said, me and my house, I will have, I have chosen to walk on the ways of God. And the psalmist said in the book of Psalms 1, verse 1 to number 6, verse 1 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand is the way of sinners, nor sit in the seats of scoffers. So you have to decide daily which is your company. Ukienda na watu wa oru, utajikuta, you are behaving like them. Kwa hivyo, you have to avoid and understand whom shall you be walking with. Ukikaa na watu wa kuongea mambo ya watu kila saa, utajikuta wewe kikao chako cha moyo wako ni cha kuongea mambo ya watu. Verse number 2 says, this man, this blessed man, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. So do you want to succeed? Joshua opted to meditate on the word of God day and night. And by that, Joshua was very successful in all his life. So why should you waste time in the streets of scoffers and evildoers? Verse number three says, he is like a tree. That blessed person is like a tree planted by the stream of waters that yield its fruits in the season and its leaves does not wither. In all what he does, he prospers. Do you want to prosper? And to live a life of prosperity, you have to choose the ways you walk with on daily basis. Chapter, uh, verse number 4 says, The wicked are not so but are like chef that the wind drives away. Wale wenye dami wanaka kama majibu yangani. Kwa sababu siyo mazito inaenda na upepo, lakini ngano inaanguka katika chondo cha kuhifadhiwa. So, do you want to live like a chef? Iyo majibu ama unataka kuhishi kama mtu waliye barikiwa katika jina laiso. Na usikose chochoto unakahitaji katika maisha yako. Verse number 5 says, Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. They are unable to sit, because that is not their ways. And verse number 6 says, For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. That beneza kuwa niposa, unaweza kuwa kiangamia katika ala mambo nafanya, kwa sababu ya njia zako. 
lakini si ufanye chaguzi njema therefore do not be like the people who says it is hopeless to serve the lord for we are going to follow our own plans and each one of us will act according to the stubbornness of his evil heart and therefore spread strife among his people unajua those people who live a stubborn life wale watu wanaishi maisha ya kutokujali vile ya mienendo yao wanasumbua watu sana ukiwa uko na bwana kama huyo naona nakuwa msumbufu ukiwa uko na mke kama huyo ukiwa na mtoto kama ule a stubborn child unaona nakusumbua sana kwa sababu ya zile njia anachagua and even in the church even at work places unakuta they are so stubborn people kwa sababu vile wamechagua yale ya maisha wamechagua kuishi katika maisha yao and that's why god hates these seven things according to proverbs chapter number 6 verse number 16 to 19 and especially this one we are talking about today verse 18 a heart that devises wicked plans and feet that are swift in running to do evil where do you want to go this afternoon after our bible study will you go for prayer or you go to sit with sinners and mind you unajua tumezungukwa na watu wote kwa sababu kwa plot sio kila mtu ameokoka hata pale tunafanya kazi but you have to make a decision and choose what you are going to speak and how what kind of life you are going to live after this bible study i shall enter in my car and i shall start meditating on what i shall talk i shall teach tomorrow and make notes and until somewhere around 6 then i go home i take my supper i sleep very early at nine, me i'm already asleep and at one, i'm awake for prayer and then polish the message i wrote during the day and when tomorrow comes i have got the morning hours to do my church work and then from there at around 11 i am back in the church to have this bible study going on so i am so busy to meditate on the word of god so how shall i be able to sit with scoffers and sinners so can you engage yourself either in prayer or you engage yourself in meditating the word of god because those who meditate on that word will never be discouraged and may god help you that you are not going to be among the people who says it is hopeless to serve the lord for we are going to follow our plans and each of us will act according to his stubbornness of his heart and therefore you continue spreading strife to everybody and for this kind of people they are fit run to evil they are swift to shed innocent blood and their thoughts are sinful because rain and destruction lie on their wake every morning me i don't want to wake up any morning for destruction i want to wake up to serve the lord and serving the lord is serving yourself kutumikia mungu unaanza na wewe when paul was advising timothy he told them can you take care of yourself even as you take care of the flock which is on your hands and may god help you to take care of your soul because you are responsible for your soul you are responsible for the soul of your children back at home you are responsible of the soul of your spouse i am responsible for you souls i have to take care of myself first that i can be able to also take care of you so we have got a responsibility and may god help us even as we think about it and meditate upon it in the name of the lord hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord i don't know what is your take this morning 
as we stand on our feet. We think and repent before God because of our habits. Are you a habitual sinner in a certain weakness? It's a sin, but you have been calling it weakness. Katika is it to Saba. Ni maeneo gani unaona umepungukiwa? Ukisimama na miguu yako, tukienda mbele zake Bwana na kumwambia Bwana ukaturehemu adhuri ya leo kwa sababu wewe unastahili sifa. Bwana unastahili kutukuzwa kwa sababu ya wema wako. Rika sata la babu. Oh, rianda bo sheka ta baba baba bo. Oh, shila bo. Afternoon. 
bless the name of the Lord. Lord, we thank you. And we appreciate you for who you are, even as you continue, Lord. Yes, to move us from one grace to the other. Oh, yes, from grass to grace. We thank you, Jehovah. Oh, Rika Satarababu. We don't want to become the acid which destroys the container and it destroys, Lord, yeah, the container where it is poured. Lord, we want to live a free life out of bondage of any habitual sin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We thank you in Jesus' name. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, even the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit do it with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen and amen in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Marvelous grace of